Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. Great, well, delighted today to have uh, Philippa Smith of Smith & Barnes Insolvency Practitioners. Uh, thanks for um, coming on, on board to uh, do an interview with us, Philippa. Uh, yeah. Would it be okay just to initially tell people who you are, what you do, and how you help people in business right now? Yep, sure. So obviously, Philippa Smith, like you've just said, my company is Smith & Barnes Insolvency Practitioners. Um, so obviously a firm of insolvency practitioners based in Garforth. Um, we have got a relatively small size practice. There's six of us um, that operate from my office. It's my company and I've got varying levels of um, staff experience within the company. Um, so obviously times are tough at the moment for the majority of people. Um, my company is obviously very busy in the line of work that we do. Um, but we just help and guide people through the financial problems that they're experiencing predominantly corporate, we do deal with some personal insolvency, um, and as well as doing the, you know, the, the actual sort of technical side of winding companies up, we're just a bit of a sounding board as well, Chris, so yeah. just for people that don't really understand their options and, and how they can the, treat the problems that they're facing, really. Wonderful. I, I, I think from, from um, experience of working with lots of businesses and business owners over time, it, it, I, I always feel there's a, quite a lot of fear involved um, around this whole procedure and what it means. Um, but I know from working with people like yourself that, you know, it, it, it's a straight, you know, it is a straightforward process. It's nothing. It, and the sooner they get help and advice from you, the, the sooner they can make the plans and understand and probably take some of the fear away. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you just kind of hit on a, a key point there. If people speak to us early enough, they've, they've got more options. Um, unfortunately, it, it's the nature of the beast, you know, when you've got financial problems, it's, it's classic to just try and hope and pray that they go away and ignore them a little bit. Um, but ultimately what that does is it kind of narrows your options down. So if you come at the, the 11th hour, um, there's not as many options available to people. So really having that conversation early on just opens up further doors for you. Um, with regard I, I'm really sorry. We, I lost that last little bit. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, I just said it, it's just key to have those conversations early, basically. If you come at the 11th hour, the, the options are narrowed. Um, yeah. So it, it's more of a rescue procedure if you have that conversation early on. Whereas if you kind of get too late, sometimes rescue is not always an option. Yeah, thank you. I think, I've re I think it's really sound advice. And it's, it, it, you know, as I say, work with lots of businesses, it's just... As you said earlier, sounding board, just come and say, what would it, what would this be like? And, yeah. and, and sometimes it's just a change of structure is something that will at least maybe protect over time in, into the future, which, again, yeah. it, you know, could be invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you hear the word insolvency practitioner and you just think it's doom and gloom. But actually a big part of what we can provide and assist with is solvency advice. So right. it's, it's kind of, you know, if you do it early enough, it's more about the solvency than the insolvency of the company. Great. That's, I love that way of looking at it. I think that's wonderful. It's solvency advice. Let's yeah, yeah. How, how we keep things going. Wonderful. Well, look, uh, it'd be good to get your, your view and your experience of, you know, how was the last eight months um, uh, mm -hmm. over the last seven months? How, how's, how's the COVID yeah. outbreak affected you? In terms of my business, so um, on day one, everybody kind of said, oh, God, you know, you're going to be absolutely bombarded. And, and I knew at that point in time that that was not going to be the situation. I think day one, people were panicking, you know, thinking more about their family life than how to structurally wind down their company. Um, you know, so we were quiet for the first few weeks, I think, until everybody adapted and got their mind into what was going on. Um, the different schemes that the government have had running for furlough and bounce back loans, you know, we've seen a, a real broad spectrum of 
people that have taken it have not taken it they've used it all they've taken it and not used it all so we, we've had a lot of companies with with differing kind of um, facilities that they've taken advantage of and different stages of where they're at and um, so our work has kind of gone up and down almost in line with the you know the new um, introductions that have come out with the, the facilities available to people um, because my firm's relatively small and we deal with the smaller end um, sort of SME kind of clients, I think they've been hardest hit earlier on, um, yep. if you like. I think probably the larger insolvency practices will maybe see next year, you know, when the larger companies are doing the restructuring, they're probably going to be busier later. Um, whereas we've been quite quite busy early on with the, with the smaller companies that haven't had the you know, the profits sort of sat there um, for, for emergencies, basically. Um, so, yeah, we, we've just, we have been really busy and I'm fortunate to be in the industry that I'm in, if you like, that our work has, has kind of gone up rather than gone down. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen some quite sad things as well, sort of, you know, companies that have been long-standing generation through family, um, companies yeah. which, you know, under normal circumstances would never be facing the problems that they're facing. Um, yeah. So it, it's been quite sad to see some of some of the companies that we've had to deal with recently. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's, it, it is a challenging time, isn't it, um, for many people, so, and, and I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, hopefully there won't be too many more um, coming forward, and the government support hopefully is going to going to solve some of those challenges. Yeah. In terms of how you do what you do, how have you had to adapt to the the lockdown situation, obviously that we've had and, and that we're going through now? Yeah. Well, in terms of just day to day, we we shut the offices, if you like, for a short period of time, um, when we were told we had to, and we all just worked from home. So we're we're fortunate that we can adapt a lot of our works virtual even before this pandemic you know we we have clients in London and things like that so we're, we're quite used to work, working on a virtual platform um, my staff are amazing um, the, I had to shoehorn them out of the office pretty much and say you know you've got to go home and um, it functions better in the office I'm not going to lie you know just logistics of things but we, we've adapted pretty well and hats off to, the, to my staff really because they're they're just troopers they're fantastic Great. So, so what, what wins have you seen through, through that process? What, what, what's, the, what's the good stuff that you've seen, obviously, in, including increasing business? What other things have happened? Yeah, well, I'm, as a practice, you know, I'm relatively new. So I only incorporated 18 months ago. Um, you know, so it's, it's a young, I mean, I've done it a long time, obviously, but I have been an employee for another company. Um, so my growth has just gone through the roof. I mean, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, I kind of left a, a very good job, you know, stability, yada, yada, um, and just kind of got to that age where I thought, you know, I, I want to try this for myself, I'll give it a good shot kind of thing. And, um, you know, in my line of business, you'd think I'd be quite savvy with the with the finances, and I did for myself a 12-month cash flow, and, you know, I just thought if, if it's, you know, not great after 12 months, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and go back to employment, you know, it's as simple as that. Um, and I did, I slugged it out for the first 12 months all on my own. It was hard graft, you know, long hours. I was everything from cleaner to director and everything in between. Um, taking my first employee on was huge for me. I was so nervous about doing it. Um, but since that, that was the new year. And since then, obviously, we, we've grown to the six of us now and very, very busy. I've taken on some really good people. Um, I think that's been really key for me, has been my choice of choice of staff members. Um, trust them all, from, you know, they're, they're great. Um, and without them, I couldn't have done it. So my business has just been fantastic, far over and above what I anticipated or hoped for, if you like. Um, I just knew that I needed to give it good foundations. Build it as best I could for the first 12 months before I over expanded. Um, I think sometimes, and this is just my personal view, but I think sometimes the, the perception of the public and other businesses, people can be so caught up with having a shiny office and all, all the material things that you almost think people expect of you. Whereas if you sort of spend too much money, on the things that people see and maybe not actually building the solid foundations you can fall down 
Um, so I was very, I was very kind of focused on not doing too much what I thought was expected of a new business and actually just give it a really good foundation, build some good contacts, do the work well, be available when people need you. You know, those are the things which are really important. And once I'd got that stage, I then knew I could sort of take on staff and, and offices and, and do that expansion, really. Brilliant. Uh, really wonderful. It's wonderful to hear very wise words, I think, for any, for any business to, to get the solid foundation for which to grow um, and, and, and keep trapping where you are. So in, in terms of the, the sort of adaptation, what, what will you keep doing the other side of, of the outbreak of lockdown? If we go back to what whatever the new normal looks like, what will you continue to do that you weren't doing before? Um, well, I think we're all, we're all a little bit more adaptable to remote working now. Um, you know, I let my guys work at home on a Friday anyway, just because I just do. It's, you know, it's a nice thing for me to be able to do. Um, also, I think in terms of sort of client base for me, we get a lot of work from accountants, for argument's sake. Um, and I think probably just um, everybody's view now is, yes, so what if you're based in Leeds? We'll, we'll quite happily work with you, even though we're down south. So continuing to keep those connections across the country um, is probably going to be something that, you know, I, I continue to focus on. Um, certainly, and, and, you know, cost is not always everything, but when you've got a southern-based company that are used to southern-based prices, you know, when they know that they can use a northern company, you, you get exactly the same service, you know, if not better, we're, you know, good, friendly, solid service, and you don't always have to pay the southern prices. Um, so I think probably just people being a little bit more open to working with companies across the country will, will be a good thing going forward as well. Great, 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 great point. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a big point of difference, isn't it? That you can, same service, but, but at different prices, it, it's uh, wonderful. So if you look back to sort of March um, and, and when we went into the, the lockdown, et cetera, what, what, what could you, or what might you have done sooner? Is there anything that you've learned looking back that you would have done? <sighs> oh, God, blimey. It, it's a tricky one, is that? Because, and, and likewise for the clients that I deal with, you know, I, I, in terms of what I do, like I mentioned, a lot of it is advisory. Yes, you, you know, you do the, all the procedural parts of closing a company down and all the rest of it, but a lot of it is advisory work and how can you possibly advise in a situation that is completely unknown? You know, if if we had an end date, if somebody turned around and said, right, 1st January, this thing's yeah. going to be over and we're all going to go back to normal, we would be able to advise that client on what to do between now and then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's just, it's completely the unknown. And so advisory is very, very difficult at the moment because you haven't got an end date. Um, and I think really we're, we're all learning and we're all just adapting. Would I have done anything different? Probably not. I think we've done really, really well. If I'm completely honest, I think we've dealt with it exceptionally well. The, yeah. the company yeah. is still growing um, and we're still providing a really good service. So no, I, I think we've done good actually, Chris, to be honest. Well done, great tip. Um, and, and how do you feel about the second lockdown? What's, uh, what's your view? <laughs> oh, do, you, do you know, in my line of work, um, I should probably be absolutely on the nose with watching all the pandemic stuff. However, I completely distance myself from it, Chris. How do I feel about it? On a personal view, uh, you know, I think we could do without it. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I... <sighs> I just, I try not to watch too much of it, if I'm honest, because it will be what it will be. Um, yeah. And I think we just all need to keep as focused as we can and get through it. Yeah, I, again, wise words, uh, very wise words. I, I think the more, um, I think there's a, there's a great quote from Walt Disney years ago, and, and he, he, he was, it went something like, um, I'm, uh, people tell me there's a recession going on, but I've chosen not to participate. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, you know, as you say, if we listen, unfortunately, news tends to want to be um, negative. Most news is, is, is you know, um, and, and therefore it doesn't help our mindset to be listening too much to all the downsides no. when no. there are plenty of plus size, your, your, your business being an example of that. But there are, there are many businesses that are growing across, um, just across industries that we're seeing, there because are. they're in a niche that's required right now. 
Exactly, exactly. And some companies have been really hard hit, obviously, you know, like the pub industry and the leisure industry yes. and the travel industry. Um, there are other companies that have absolutely rocketed um, because of this. And whilst there are going to be shutdowns and companies, you know, failing, it's inevitable. Yes. On the bright side, there's going to be an awful lot of startups. Um, you know, I think probably because of the redundancy level when companies close down, you know, the jobs are not necessarily going to be there in the sectors to walk back into another job. Um, and maybe people will be almost forced into taking that decision to do it for themselves. Um, so I think there's probably going to be a massive increase in new startups as well as, as closures, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. It's, it's the flexible thinkers, I think, isn't it? To look at what the opportunities are in the challenge, um, yeah. of which there will be many, and there are many at the moment. Um, we, we've been lucky enough to see clients that, um, you know, one that comes to mind worked primarily in the travel industry, who, you know, business dried up very, very quickly and has just moved into different industries, mm -hmm. similar service, but to a new industry, um, yeah. and, and was very innovative in breaking into the industries and now has another four market sectors that they work in. And when travel comes back, well, they'll add back in. Yeah. So I, I, I totally it. agree. So let, let's look forward and positive. Um, what are you most looking forward to when we get something like a new normal? What's... Just routine, being back in the office, human contact. Um, you know, it, I just think all the small things that we all took for granted. Um, I've always been like a family person and, uh, you know, it's always been the things that matter to me most anyway. Um, but I think we've all just taken things for granted and the material things in life do not matter. You know, it's just not important, is it? And I just hope that when we come out of the other side of that, we all, we all keep that in mind and, and remember what's really important. Great, great. And what, what have you learned about yourself over this last eight, nine months? Um, I like seeing people more than I thought I did. <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, I suppose um, I've got I've got more confidence in myself the, than I did have before. You know, I've I've kind of COVID aside, I've broken through my own insecurity barriers with building a business and all that it entails. I've I've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose I'm I'm quite proud of what what we've achieved really. Great. It sounds like it sounds like it, and you should be clearly. So, so what, what what does the future look like for you in the business? Well, that changes constantly. Um, I was only having this conversation the other day um, within my business. Blimey! Um, I think one thing, like I said to you, you know, I didn't necessarily anticipate my business growing as quick as it has done. Um, the The decision to set up my own company was never financial. Um, it was never a financially driven decision. It was purely a lifestyle. You know, I've got a little boy who's seven, single mom. Um, I just wanted to have the options available to me that do not come as an employee. You know, it's the Christmas concert and I'm going and I don't need to ask anybody for argument's sake. Um, that has escalated. My company's grown. I've got staff. We've got a good client base what I thought on day one is nowhere near what you know what it is now uh, and that business model and, and everything changes constantly for me um, I had a conversation the other day about whether I should take on um, another insolvency practitioner I'm the sole IP at the firm um, and I find that doing the business development side and the technical insolvency practitioner side you know sometimes I'm pillar to post um, so maybe another insolvency practitioner is not off the cards, which I would never have thought on day one, you know. It, so, yeah, it, it changes all the time, but in the right direction. It's all about growth, um, you know, for me, so which is, which is great. Wonderful. And, and what, I mean, I guess on the flip side of that, what, what challenges might you face as you move forward? Are there, are there anything that you foresee that you're, you're planning to overcome? Yeah, I mean, look, you know... I, insolvency practitioner so I'm always I'm always trying to you know make sure that we're ahead of the curve and all the rest of it I, I see too many problems with other companies and that you know the trigger signs in my own um I think the only concern that I've got is um because it's a new company like, like I've said but that coupled with the pandemic has given me an increase in um in work 
I don't want to overexpand in the pandemic. Um, and if the work sort of peters off, you know, down the line to have overexpanded. So I've got, I've got to kind of balance the need of, of staff to deal with the level of work that we've got, but I also don't want to um, overexpand and if it and if it quietens down, have too many people. So I've just got to try and keep that balancing act between not working the guys like you, you know, like a dog, um, but but likewise um, not having too many staff that I panic if you know if it quietens down. So I think, but other than that, I'm I'm happy with how things are. Wonderful. Well, I, I just it, it's great to hear that you know your, your business, which isn't as you said, as a business, you've not been going that long. You've you've thrived and flourished, and clearly you're focusing on helping people um, to, to come through this. Whether that's uh, and I know we we talked about this before, keep keeping them at you know either taking them through the process they need to go through or helping them avoid it. So yep. the solvency advice I know from from speaking before is as important as the insolvency process and advice too so that's wonderful well, well look I uh, keep I mean I say keep up the good work and we look forward to um perhaps you'd be kind enough maybe in six nine twelve months come back and just tell tell us how, how it is then and where you are and how many people you have and what's yeah what's absolutely like then. yeah that'd be great brilliant well thank you so much Philip for thanks, been, Chris. Uh, been absolutely fascinating no problem thanks Chris thank you thanks for watching what was your takeaway from today's interview? Please post it in the comments below and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.